Welcome to our presentation on using social media to examine containment policy impacts on public sentiments during the pandemic. A policy is an instrument of the state. A policy utilize the authority of state over its resident. Now, during the crisis time, governments introduce policies in order to make sure that their residents are out of danger, financially and physically healthy, in, well informed, and hopefully happy. Crisis time policies, they are generally not very rigid. They evolve as the situation unfolds. Four such focus areas that we found during pandemics as per literature are healthcare, containment and closure, economy, and other miscellaneous. Various such policies were also issued in Singapore by Singapore government. In this paper, we solely focus on containment and closure policies. Here is a quick look at the policies that are under containment and closure. So there are uh, around eight of these identified in the literature. When it comes to judging policy, we see two broad thought processes coming in. One is from the policy makers who actually help the state to create the policies and execute them for the residents. And of course, policymakers are a subset of residents. But when policymakers judge a policy, they employ a strategic and evidence-based reasoning and a conscious, rational decision-making. On the other hand, it's not entirely true for the general populace or the policies. We propose that if we employ a feedback back to the policymakers and the governing bodies, there could be a channel created for refinement of policies as well. Why we think it is important is because policies are ultimately made for people and they affect attitudes and well-being of the residents of a state. So not knowing how people feel may be counterintuitive or may defeat the purpose overall. Social scientists have acknowledged the importance of public opinion. There is a question that if you employ a policy, will a policy encourage or deter civic engagement, foster growth of interest, or will have any unintended consequences that has to be studied? In past, it, it has been seen that social media is being used by researchers to track public opinion and sentiment. And social media is a place where people gather themselves, organize themselves in communities, they seek support, they, they provide support, and they share and influence opinions as well. So understanding the sentiments can actually help policymakers design better accepted policies, which ultimately will have higher compliance. Focusing on COVID-19, we found there are around 33 studies which have used 16 social medias. But what we found that these studies were rather short term they span from one month to four months long, which is only a one-time cross-section. These studies did not consider the policy granularity, like, like what we've shown, that there are eight sub-policies under containment and closure, right? Then there are phases of circuit breakers, like pre-circuit breaker, the, the complete lockdown, and then gradual opening of the economy. Also, these studies lack robust methods for causal analysis like difference in difference or RDD analysis. And also the lack of supporting theories from social or political science from where policy makers generally come from. So what we did is we, we found out that most of the residents of Singapore are active on social media platform Facebook. So we chose it for our study. To be robust and, and away from bias, we, on Facebook, we gathered data from publicly available groups related to government, news media, community groups, and focused groups. From all these groups, we systematically collected data from 2019 November to 2020 November. We kept two months period before January to, to observe for any pre-trends. Then after proper data cleaning and pre-processing, we determined our dependent variable, which was the sentiment value or valence value on a scale of minus one to plus one 
for every comment that was made on these groups during COVID-19. Right. Then for our independent and control variables, we used variables which are user generated, such as sentiment lag, means sentiment before one day or two day or three days. What period is it? Is it uh, phase one, phase two, phase three? How many days since the start of uh, November 2019 it has been? Then policy attributes such as the various policy types for containment and closure, for economic policies and, and other policies. Then pandemic attributes like new cases every day, new deaths reported every day, the positive case rate reported on a daily basis, and economic We used all these to start with our regression analysis so as to gauge what are the main predictors towards the dependent variable, what are their coefficients, and how they influence the dependent variable. And the dependent variable being the average daily sentiment here. Then we also did to uh, the RDD in time experiment to gauge a uh, causal impact at the boundary of lockdown and opening of lockdown. Also, because these first two techniques deal with average daily sentiment, we wanted to get inside and do a bit more in-depth analysis. So we looked at the various moods embedded in those average sentiments. So we did a mood analysis as well. So looking at the collected data and, and the sentiments observed during the three phases, you can see that the red one is the pre-circuit breaker, the green one is the circuit breaker, and then the blue and the purple color one are the gradual opening. And, and in Singapore, we call them phase one and phase two, but the, we combined phase one and phase two into phase two for our study. We saw that canceling of public events and travel controls uh, had a negative impact on the average daily sentiment, but also informing people, contact tracing, using masks and support measures had positive impact on average sentiment. And these are all the policy components which, which came to light during this, this particular analysis. Now to do a robust uh, causal analysis at the boundary of those uh, policies being employed, we did an RDD in time. Here our running variable is time. So, so we are dealing with an RDIT, a regression design in time analysis. YT, which is our average, average daily sentiment and beta one is the, the attribute of interest here, which is the magnitude of discontinuity at time T. We also included the time varying unobservables to avoid any biases, right? And then also we used RDIT with covariates in to include as many controls to prevent any bias. Before we actually uh, decide on the polynomial form of the equation, we did a sensitivity test and we found that the order of two is pretty much stable. Then also we tested for the presence of any autoregressive component in the signal and, and we did not find any. We can see that, that the boundaries of lockdown here on April 7 and the or opening of lockdown or lifting of lockdown or circuit breaker on June 19, there is a sig statistically significant discontinuity. Also the sentiment values will show a decreasing trend as the days progress and which is also captured in our multiple linear regression design as well. After that, we moved on to moods analysis where we actually looked at like chick's wheel of eight emotions. So we you know, emotions ranging from trust, joy, surprise, sadness, fear, anger, anticipation, and disgust. We can see that overall the, the positive moods dominated, but uh, you can see that uh, during pre-circuit breaker, the surprise component or, or the fear had a steeper rises. And then during circuit breaker, the fear seems to be rising faster as well, along with the, the anticipation and discuss. So the people are, are people are unsure when it will be uh, it will be reopening. So so we found out that 
you know, you need using multiple linear regression, one can highlight the important feedback indicators of policy variables if, if this design is construed in a way that includes those as predict uh, independent variable. Regression design in time focuses mainly on intervention showed uh, interventions around those boundaries and then showed a causal relation between sentiment and running variable. The negative slope of average sentiment during circuit breaker indicates that people tend to fear fearful, sad, and unsure. And at these times, it, uh, this, it could be good to actually do more of, uh, of outreach programs through social media so that people feel at ease. Because if you recall, in multiple linear regression, we saw that those coefficients are positive uh signs so it means that they are they are well received by the center by the residents we saw that the fall in sentiment later in phase two suggests that people were still unsure of future and unhappy with the restrictions especially people talked a lot about travel restrictions because because people have been confined for a while so we propose that government bodies plan campaigns and interventions via social media when they start to see the rise in levels of negative emotion especially this will quickly help to curb or, or address those concerns and reduce the overall anxiety level as well we acknowledge that there are certain limitations to our study uh, the variables we chose were selected by our literature survey but there might be more variables to to be included in the study Sentiments as reflected on social media may not be completely representative of the population, and it may not be possible to generalize the results from Singapore to other dissimilar countries. Also, we do not have a completely randomized experiment, but we have worked with an as if randomness since we are taking observations from a naturally occurring experiment. We sincerely believe that, that we have shown in our paper a detailed policy analysis where we have included the various sub policies and various phases. We have shared a robust analysis using RD design in time and we presented our analysis in the light of a theory chosen from social sciences, which is feedback effect theory. In future, we think the study can be extended. So as mentioned in feedback theory, it will be good to quantify the proximity and visibility of circuit breaker announcements. So it's one of the, the point in feedback theory. Also, it will be good to include more data and information from more potentially relevant Facebook and other social media platforms such as Twitter and examine in more granularity the impacts of specific uh, containment and closure policies. It's, for example, changing intensities. Thank you and stay safe.